in southeastern Louisiana, in the vast expanse of wetlands we call Barataria Terrebonne. A rich history exists. Recreation abounds. And fisheries thrive. Yet, there is perhaps something even more interesting and beautiful that will make you appreciate this unique area. Birds. Here you can discover nature's most curious, most colorful, and most graceful of creations. In fact, almost 400 different species of birds frequent Barataria terrebone alone. Now that's a lot of birds. Southern Louisiana is one of the premier birding areas in the United States. And there are several factors that, that play into that. One is that uh, we're in the center of migratory pathways of a lot of birds. And particularly in spring, when birds have crossed the Gulf of Mexico on their way north to their breeding grounds, they need these coastal habitats in order to stop and find insects or fruits in order to restore their resources, their fat reserves, to move on to their breeding ground. And a similar phenomenon happens here in the fall. So you have these, these two bursts of, of huge activity. This is the time when, when most people come here, but the marshes of South Louisiana are incredibly productive for birds. What makes Barataria terrebone so rich in animal diversity is the rich variety of its habitats. This area in southeast Louisiana is blessed with a tremendous diversity of habitat types. It's important for many neotropical migratory birds that come through. I mean, our, our geography, where we are on the face of the earth, puts us in a real prime location for a number of the species that are flying back and forth from South America, coming to North America during the, the springtime and then then going back during the fall. And the habitats here, not only being diverse, are extremely productive and they provide resting areas, uh, areas for, so that these birds can forage and, uh, and, and feed and rest in preparation for their trips, again, back and forth across the Gulf of Mexico. It doesn't matter what a bird's preferred food is, Barataria terrebone has it all. And it doesn't matter whether a bird prefers tree-lined ridges or no trees. Barataria terrebone has that too. Urban landscapes and backyard habitats. Agricultural lands. Upland ridges. Bottomland hardwoods. Bald cypress and tupelo swamps sandy beaches, and what may look like unending vistas of land meeting water nestled between swamps and ridges is actually the largest variety of marshland in the United States. The Nature Conservancy right now is going through what we call eco-regional planning and we're looking at trying to identify the best remaining uh, landscapes in ecoregions across the country. And in the Gulf Coast, which includes Louisiana, Texas, the Barataria Basin has been identified as a real important area for a couple of reasons. One, it has the full complement of native estuarine habitats from salt marsh to fresh marsh, many of which are in excellent condition. Um, it has extremely high quality aquatic systems with oysters and shrimp production. Um, and then to add to that, it has Grand Isle, which in itself is very unique. Along the coastal edge of Louisiana, barrier islands are of utmost importance, not only for protecting us against storms and hurricanes, but as habitat for birds. Barrier islands uh, along the Gulf Coast are really critical habitat for uh, a number of different groups of birds. One, for the migrants, because they're the first land that migrants reach uh, that are either crossing the Gulf in the spring or they're the last land, the last place that migrants have to feed before they head off across the Gulf in the fall. 
Uh, and that runs the gamut from forest birds that uh, need to uh, fatten up in the oak forests that grow on the barrier islands, uh, such as at Grand Isle. Uh, that's everything from ruby-throated hummingbirds that have just flown across the Gulf and need to find nectar, uh, to all the warblers and vireos and thrushes that feed in the forest itself. But also the barrier islands provide uh, shorebird habitat for other migratory shorebirds that are feeding on the beach or feeding on the mudflats. Twice each year in spring and fall, both Circumgulf and Transgulf flyways cross Louisiana, making this area a major stopping place for migratory birds. Louisiana is very important to migration because what we have is we have a lot of songbirds and we think about birds that are breeding on the eastern half of the United States. They winter in South America, Central America, Mexico, and they cross the Gulf of Mexico and they come into Louisiana. And they'll stop over in, in a lot of areas, even small areas of woods, but they'll stop over to rest, to get food, to drink water, to rehydrate. So Louisiana being on the Gulf of Mexico is, is one of the first pieces of land that gets seen by these birds. Sometimes bird watchers along the coast experience what is called a fallout. A spring fallout in one coastal location or another, anywhere from Alabama to South Texas, can be an amazing phenomenon. You walk into a small woodlot, it may only be an acre in size but there may be hundreds, literally hundreds of individual birds. It really is an exciting event. And those conditions only occur, of course, when weather conditions force birds to stop their migration and rest and refuel along the coastline. Many of the birds that migrate uh, between the United States and the tropics actually cross the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, they make the flight of four, five, six hundred miles crossing uh, the Gulf of Mexico. But if they encounter the slightest adversity, north winds, a little rain, uh, strong easterlies or westerlies that blows them a little bit off course, uh, and they've used up their fat reserves, then they need to land as soon as they see land, and that's going to be the Barrier Islands or the Chenier's. Uh, it's going to be somewhere right on the coast. And the same happens in reverse in the fall. The barrier islands are often the last place that a bird has to fuel up before it takes off across the Gulf of Mexico. Although fallout is an unpredictable occurrence caused by specific weather patterns, what is predictable is that there is always a huge number of birds to admire here. Neotropical migrants, year-round resident birds, and winter migrants that breed in the northern United States and Canada, then winter in the temperate climate of the Gulf Coast. But admiring birds wasn't what many of our early settlers had in mind. Uh, Audubon once uh, spent a day watching uh, gunners, market hunters, working outside New Orleans, and they shot 48,000 golden plovers on a uh, spring day. There isn't anywhere in North America you could go today and see 48,000 uh, golden plovers, much less shoot them in one day. Looking back, in the, in the 1850 census of the Barataria region, one quarter of all of the adult males, the free males uh, in Barataria, when they were asked what their profession was, they said they were hunters. We don't realize now uh, how much hunting was going on. And we're not talking hunting for subsistence, we're not talking about hunting for sport, we're talking about hunting uh, to provide meat for people's tables and to provide feathers, uh, to make hats, uh, herons and egrets being shot simply so that the uh, feathers could be removed uh, and, and used as decoration. Uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions and actually billions of birds shot, uh, field stripped, packed in barrels and shipped by railroad or steamship and, and eaten just as we eat chicken or pork or anything today. I mean, we just don't realize how much of that was going on. Species risked extinction. By the turn of the 20th century, 
Congress was forced to pass restrictions. The Lacey Act of 1909 stopped traffic in bird plumes. The Migratory Bird Treaty Act of 1918 protected migratory birds. Though it took many generations for federal restrictions to be recognized. Still other obstacles to bird protection and preservation occurred. Landscapes have changed dramatically by our constant demand for wood, places to live, oil, and food. Declines of, in birds have been documented over the last few decades. The actual cause of that decrease in many cases is unknown, but we suspect several things. One is loss of breeding habitat as we're converting our natural forests and grasslands to non-native habitats. One is loss of habitat in the wintering grounds, and that's received a lot of public attention, the loss of our rainforests, for example. But another that hasn't received nearly as much attention is the loss of habitats that these birds require during their migration. And it hasn't been until the last few years that people have really started to focus uh, on, for example, these woodland habitats near the coast that are so important to birds. Through conservation studies and reforestation programs, we've begun to restore fragile habitats preserve existing ones, and replant those that were lost. At one time, from pictures that date back to the 1940s and uh, earlier, there was uh, some forest in this area. And so the effort of today is to reforest. So we're going to do uh, half of this property in oak trees, hackberries, and mulberry trees. The importance of preserving this habitat uh, in terms of, of of birds, I suppose, is to provide them an area where they could stop and, and, and forage and they can nest, etc. Without that habitat, then you can't support the great diversity of birds we have here that either stay here year-round or do, or at times come through this area. We are planting trees to reestablish a habitat for the birds that are going to migrate through from Grand Isle, working through the Nature Conservancy. We have 3,000 trees to plant today. So this place is just wonderful. When, when we have the birds coming through in the spring, it's just alive. And it's just so much fun to come down here and watch the birds. When you're bird watching, it's not just about learning about how to identify a bird and what it looks like, but you're learning about how the whole ecosystem works and about how seasonal changes impact these birds and how they relate to their habitat and the importance of uh, their migration patterns. And all of these things together is what you think about when you go bird watching and why you want to learn about birds. In a sense, these coastal in transit migrant habitats uh, link the hemisphere together, uh, and the conservation of these habitats just is, is very important to people from, uh, from northern Manitoba to northern Argentina. A more general issue is that human beings have over the course of a long period of time caused a serious degradation in the quality of the habitats that birds need to get by. And every species suffers a different set of problems, but uh, all of them are suffering as a result of, you know, the changing nature of the world as humans make their livings and alter the face of the earth. Wetland destruction by man and by nature still ravage these beautiful and essential habitats. But we've learned that if we act in time, what seem like irreversible problems can successfully be addressed. Because what's bad for the birds is bad for us as well. DDT was introduced, it's a chemical that was used to kill mosquitoes for the most part. And it was sprayed throughout neighborhoods uh, very regularly and what happened was is DDT would get sprayed and it would seep into, say, a water or a stream area. And you have insects in there that would basically absorb the DDT. And then fish would eat those insects. And then birds like peregrine falcons, bald eagles, uh, brown pelicans would eat those fish and then they absorb the DDT into their system. So DDT, uh, which was outlawed in the early 70s in the United States, really affected large populations of birds. And fortunately, once that was banned, 
A lot of work has been done to reintroduce those birds into some areas and they have thrived and many are very close to being off of the endangered species list. DDT devastated many bird populations. But the brown pelican, the Louisiana state bird, once reintroduced, has thrived. Other species weren't so lucky. When Audubon uh, was in Louisiana, a lot of what he saw is exactly what we see today. A lot of the bird life has remained the same, but there's no question that in, in the number of species that he saw, like ivory-billed woodpecker, Carolina parakeet, and your pigeon, which were here in the millions, uh, if not the billions, are now gone. Louisiana, uh, specifically in a habitat type that's known as the bottomland hardwood forest, had several species of birds that were native to the state that don't exist anywhere anymore. But you had a lot of uh, birds alone that were once here that are now gone. And you know, we'll never get those back. And they're pretty much gone because we destroyed their habitat. If you don't have a habitat, then you can't support the birds. So you're just basically kicking the birds out of an area. Birds are, really do serve as a surrogate for what is happening with our natural environment. You can go out there, you can count the number of singing birds one year, you go out the next year and it's declined. It starts making you think about what's happened. When a species is endangered, it's a wake-up call that something is out of balance. Preservation societies make huge efforts to keep track of bird populations to determine the effects of environmental changes. Oh, you so lucky, Jake. <laughs> more and more communities and organizations are recognizing the value in maintaining natural habitat, not just for the birds, but for themselves. There are several reasons that we should care about birds and on several levels. One, there's a moral level in that they are partners on this planet and given the dominance that we have over so much of what happens on the earth, it's our responsibility to uh, assure their, their continued survival. A second level is, is purely aesthetic because they're just so astonishingly beautiful and, and such interesting creatures. And then that leads to whole issues of economics. And birds bring economic benefits well beyond the people spending money on seeing them in that they perform numerous invaluable ecological functions. The, the number of insects that birds take out of forests is incredibly valuable to the rate of production of wood and fiber for the, for the forest products industry. The seed dispersal capabilities of birds uh, mean that, that ecosystem health is uh, maintained in ways that would falter significantly if there weren't birds. So there's lots of levels, morals, aesthetics, economics, um, good reasons for conserving birds. Not only does it improve the economies of local communities by having places that people want to come to view birds and other wildlife, but it also helps encourage communities to protect more wildlife and more habitat. Many coastal communities are already accustomed to tourism, but lots of sites that are more inland that don't have, already have hunting and fishing and that sort of thing established, all of those places have birds. Birds are everywhere. So it, it's a great way to bring other people from other parts of the state or from outside the state to your community. There are people from, from all over the country, the U.S., uh, and really all over the world that, that come down just to see these birds. And uh, the numbers of these birds, it's phenomenal. They're just <laughs> everywhere you look. And some trees look like Christmas trees. There's yellow birds and blue birds, as in the bunnings and blue grosbeaks. beaks. Uh, just fantastic. It's a very quiet sport. It's a very quiet pastime. Bird watchers go into areas to see specific birds. Uh, we spend a lot of money and we take a lot of pictures and all we leave behind are footprints. So uh, we don't make a lot of noise because you, you scare the birds away. So when we go into an area, we go very quietly. Tourism programs and statewide festivals, coupled with larger conservation efforts, are helping to identify birding trails throughout Louisiana and educate us all on the benefits of bird watching.
Right now we're working with a number of groups, a uh, huge diversity of groups that try to establish the Great Coastal Louisiana Birding Trail here in southern Louisiana. Uh, we've chosen the Baratari Terrebonne Basin as the first place to begin developing that trail to entice people from not only this area to become familiar with the different habitats and the importance of these areas and the importance of birds, but also the focus includes educating other people as to the places that they could come here in Louisiana and see these different types of birds. Along with discovering where to view birds, we can also learn how to maintain and increase habitat for birds. We're losing so much of our natural habitat just from construction. And you can take and save a little part of Louisiana, a part that may be gone for forever. You can take a little five by 10 spot in the back of your yard, plant a native, you help the environment, you save the plant that may have one day been lost from your area, plus you get the benefits of having the hummingbirds and the butterflies use it. I mean, you couldn't ask for much more. You use something native, you get a, a, a good information before you buy the plant, know what it's gonna do before you put it in your landscape. And you don't have to do a lot of trimming to it. You don't have to do a lot of maintenance to it. And it's just so much easier. It's a whole lot easier to come out in your garden and sit and enjoy the birds than it is to come out there and pull weeds or cut bushes. The major advantage might be spiritual in that uh, you're doing something right. You're doing something that not only feels right, but it is right. For example, if you are trying to maintain several acres of short grass, it takes a lot of input of, of petroleum products, whether it's gasoline and all for, for machinery to mow, or whether it's chemicals to spray. So you are spending money you're spending valuable time, and you are putting petroleum products in areas where if you had your druthers, you just would not do something like that. So, uh, you know, from that standpoint, when you begin to use uh, different native vegetation in place of lawn grass, then all of a sudden that input is passe. You don't have to worry about that ever again. Pretty soon, you start to get into the flow, and you find yourself, you're not fighting against nature anymore, but you're going with it. And it's much easier, it's much more peaceful, and that settles into your, to your being. And you say, wow, this, is, this must be the way because it's peaceful, it's right. This simplest of pastimes is a rewarding hobby for all. The great thing about birds is, uh, just as the great things about, about butterflies is, is that they're visible during the day, they're active during the day, and you don't see the same thing every day. No matter where you are, you can see new birds. Uh, and in any tree, any shrub, around any corner, you can see a bird you've never seen before. Why do I like birds? Because they, they bring joy to my life. Because they're, they're another creature that God created besides me. And when I look at them and study their lives and find out that um, they have such intricate life systems and that the planet we live on, we are not just the masters of it, that they inhabit the earth as well as we do. Birds are fascinating creatures, I think. I, I just like the color, the, the melody, uh, the fact that they fidget around, although I think they're fidgeting around. They just seem to be foraging for food in the trees and on the ground and moving around and they just uh, provide you with a peaceful opportunity to sit there and watch nature. I would say our, our world would be a, a much less enjoyable place if it wasn't for birds. Uh, you know, not only their songs and their appearance, but the role that they play in our ecosystem. You know, whether they provide food for other species or whether they are important to control insects, for example. Birds play a, an integral role in ecosystem function and they're just an important part of our happiness as humans on this earth. From bringing us pleasure in quiet moments to making us appreciate the powerful yet delicate balance of our environment, birds play an important role.
in Louisiana, in the Barataria Terrebonne Basin and beyond. Many songs, many colors, so much to hear and see. Make this a year-long paradise for birders from around the world. Birds are waiting for you to discover them. For more information on birds and birding trails, call 1-800-259-0869 or visit our website at www.btnep.org.